Hello and welcome to another Ball Blog Video Diary Supplement Garden Walk A bit like the story of buses, you wait for ages for a bus to come along and then two come together It's only a week or so since I put the last video up which was just as the snow left the garden because there was so much had come out under the snow Well we've had a few days of really nice sunny mild weather and uh, mild, I, I should qualify, mild for us. So it's it's not quite broken through into double figures, but certainly high singles. I think we were up to eight and nine, a bit higher, maybe slightly higher in the full sunshine. And the, the, the wee bulbs have just exploded. So if we just um, pan out here, you'll see. I'm going to have a walk around and look at some of the others. Here in the cobble bed we have a range of crocus and galanthus and that's and the aranthus beyond which is really the story of the the garden at the moment it's they are the dominant plants so the snowdrops the aranthus snowflakes as well I should mention them leucogems so let's have a wander around lovely this time in the morning well there's not much other noise around I've got the birds singing with me the raised slab beds which look so green and lush for much of the year at this time they've always looked a bit scruffy and I'm gradually working out which are the best bulbs to bring in so we can have some really interesting bulbous interest at this time of year so crocus and some of the small narcissus and of course some aranthus these are uh, aranthus guinea golds guinea golds good in places where you don't want it to be seeding around but I just love the speed at which these bulbs appear as if from nowhere so we've got groups here the, if I come down some of the snowdrops we'll see this wee one here just Galanthus navalis these ones over here with the shinier green leaves Galanthus warrenovi and then others you'll see further across there are Plicatus and Plicatus hybrids you can get the the mass clumps, the big clumps but what I really like is little groups like this freshly planted out and spaced out so we got little this crocus a few different forms of the yellow Galanthus hybrids these are some of Anne Wright's Dryad Gold we've got quite a few of these that we split up and planted around and then if we come up here also with the yellow tips Leucogium so this is a Leucogium Carpathicum or Leucogium vernum, var Carpathicum if you like, because the tips on the petals tend to be yellow rather than green. Although having said that, here's the same clone. Here's one look with yellow tips at once at one side in green. So it can be a mixture, and this is to do with exposure to light and temperature mainly, I think. So they can vary from year to year, and as you can see there, even from flower to flower. But the bulbs tend not to stay in the beds here, they're allowed to seed out. And as you can see in the paths, there are as many bulbs in the paths as anywhere. And this is why 
when we walk around the garden we try to there are stepping slabs all the way around the main walks of the garden and we really like people to walk from slab to slab because if you step off you might crush some of the, the wee bulbs first of the, the larger trumpet daffodils just starting to open here in the shade I move it, let some sun into it, it's me that's shading it and down here lovely Corydalis caucasicus starting to come out the Aranthus seeding in here the giant spikes of Fritillaria imperialis growing by the minute and then some of these clumps of some of the bigger beautiful large chunky snowdrops becoming a wide range of sizes although they're spectacular in great clumps like this I I'm not so keen on the great clumps. I like them when they're more spaced out. So gradually I'm getting all the leaves lifted off the paths and I'm getting good progress in this better weather. Some of the leaves that I lift and shred just goes back as a mulch onto the beds. The rock garden bed that I just cleared the leaves off it yesterday and worked on it to get it a bit tidy so it's had the initial big tidy up but now it needs the refined tidy up an area up there that I replanted when I lifted a batch a big batch of colchicum that we're taking over here's a group of iris Catherine Hodgkin a really nice early iris that's needing lifted and split And I may actually do that while it's in growth, while I remember. Because it's too, getting too congested. It's much better when they're spaced out like... Oh, here's me pushing the... Sorry, I, I keep t accidentally tapping the zoom. There's the... There's how I like them, a bit more spaced. They would have been lifted and planted last year. But if you see Iris Catherine Hodgkin, the, watch for those ones with the very dark dark blue streaks in them and that tends to be symptoms of virus infection you're really better keeping that out of your garden so this is how it should look without Iris Catherine Hodgkin without those very darker blue bits it's all right to have some very dark coming up the heat keel and down at the center but not further up on the plant you see that's symptomatic of virus But it's really nice to, across the bed with the birds singing. And the snowdrops are great because even deep in here at the base of a, I'll stop the lights, the sun flaring on the lens, even right in under a big rhododendron here. Yes, this is, I'll move around so not, the light's not flaring. This big rhododendron, it's more like a tree than a bush. Goes up above our heads. This is rhododendron decorum. We've raised these from seed. And if you look in there, you can see how they, I like to space out snowdrops. This bed here has got more Leucodiums. They're just pushing through. It's a bit more shade, a bit cooler here. It's amazing how you learn in a garden where the warm bits and where the cooler bits are. So if I come round here, there's a, a little stone seat here where we like to sit and get a view from a quiet part of the garden. You can see towards the others. But here we can zoom in and see this lovely clump of Aranthus. All started from seed. We just scattered the seed.
And if I come around here, you can see in the path, the, down in the path here, are all the bulbs and other seedlings that are seeding into the path. These have all appeared because yesterday I was taking some of the leaves off of this path. But here's a group. This is how I like to see my snowdrops planted out individually. This was an area that didn't have snowdrops until I think it was just last year probably I planted them out. And down in the path again you can see crocus and, and seedlings coming out all the way, self-seeding everywhere. And that's a really nice way to work with nature. And you can see the, the paving slabs that we need to walk around on. And here in the leaf, leaving the leaves gives you a very natural look and it's good for the soil as well. So another grouping there of yellow galanthus. The big Dutch giant Dutch crocus pushing up there. These are remnants from our very first venture into bulbs that we like to keep to remind us of these. They, they are wonderful big robust plants for the right place and here at the base of this Acer they work well. You can see as well from the this time with the low sun it's still not that high in the sky. We get a lot of light and shade in this garden because of all the trees. We come up to the top, the pond's no longer frozen. And here they, in this bed We've got some of the wee specials, Aranthus. Most of the yellow Aranthus you're seeing are guinea gold here because I don't want one that seeds around here. Of oh, the bigger ones, the ones I'm trying to get to seed around are this wee fella, which is Aranthus pinnatifida. So we've planted a number out in here. There's one here. So I can see a group of leaves there that's not going to flower this year, but I planted a lot of young seedlings out. To establish it in this bed. Here we have the Hamamelis, the hit witch hazels. Looks good against the, the blue of the sky. And if you look back there, you can see the, the amount of trees and the degree of light and shade. Even in these deep recesses, deep under the shade at the, this end of the garden, under the, the birches and other big trees. Snowdrops are pushing through. They just come a bit later here. This end of the garden is more shaded. This is the south end of the garden behind the wall, the boundary wall. So it doesn't get so much sun at this point. It only gets the very western sun. This bed I'm walking along now, the raised wall, it will, too, it will also burst into life soon. It's just a bit later, the plants that come in here. Come down the steps. A lovely group of... This was just a pot of... Or, or a group of seedlings. I can't remember if it was a potful or a just scattered seed of... Crocus or Thomasinian. It's a lovely... It's a lovely uniform pink group. Really nice. And crocuses. 
the moment they're shut, but as soon as the sun comes onto them and it warms up a wee bit, they open. And then round. One of my favourite snowdrops is this giant, is it Mighty Atom or Big Ben or whatever, I forget. The group anyway, it's apparently a group now, but it's got these huge flowers and short stems. And, and it really is quite a spectacular little plant. It does tend to arch over because the flowers are so huge that they, they pull the stems over a bit, but I, I, I kind of like that effect. Again, we've got the, the Aranthus seeding around both in the bed and out into the path. It's a whole batch out in the path. Pelibors as well, they're coming out. But it really is the, the very early. I mean, we tend to speak about them as spring flowering, but it's really, it's kind of still late winter. Groups of snowdrops. In the beds where lying below these trilliums and erythroniums and dicentras and portophyllums and so many other plants in there that will come through soon. More here. Let me just come round to the to this angle. Get down to this bed, the cyclamen cyclamen comb against the moss. These flowers will keep going and going and the seedlings come on and then it sort of comes out of this little sand bed. And you can maybe just spot in the green through the leaves all the erythroniums, prim primulas, primroses and so many other plants to come through. Here's Galanthus Warinoei. This is Elizabeth Harrison with the with the yellow tips. If I come around here. We've got Iris Sheila and Germany. There's another group there. Another group there, similar to Catherine Hodgkin, but to me a cleaner colour. And this is a down here, the, the wee deep yellow crocus turkeyennis. I'm just coming here because I wanted to show you a couple of snowdrops in the frame. One is this. This is a Waranoei. Just hold, get it into the light so we, we can focus on it and see it with, with green tip, green outers. That came from Sochi. And up here, look at that, the smallest little snowdrop I've ever seen. It's a dainty little thing. Ideal for a trough for a raised bed and that's where that one will go as soon as I get enough numbers up. So that's the a quick circuit of the garden. Totally not speaking again about the bulb houses, which I really must get into and do a video from in there for you because there's so much in there to see. But I'm almost done a, a bit of a loop and back down towards the the house. Looking south. Look into another bed. Again, these beds. This is the this is the waking up. 
this is the alarm clock for the garden and there's just got to be a, a succession of other bulbous and herbaceous plants coming up giving us interest in these beds but for the moment I suppose it's the various forms of Galanthus and Leucogem that we can enjoy. So I'll end it there. Thanks very much for staying with me and I'll see you again soon.